Hey, good morning, Apostles Lutheran Church. I'm Pastor Steve Kaufman, your interim pastor. It's great to see you this morning. We are on a journey, aren't we? We're on a journey through this hot and humid summer. We are on a journey through this COVID-infected world in which we live and trying to do our very best. We are glad you realize that we are alive and well here at Apostles Lutheran Church. And if you think you know of somebody who doesn't realize that, I'm relying on you to tell them, listen, see what we're doing. We're busy here, we're active, and we are looking forward to the day when we'll get together again. So thanks for tuning in. Uh, I wish you well as we consider the wonderful good news of Jesus Christ today. I thank our uh, musicians for their wonderful gifts, and as always, our videographer and our administrator doing a great job. It takes a village, let me tell you folks, and we've got one here, a wonderful, loving community in Christ. May God bless our worship. We begin our worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 
Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. God of all peoples, your arms reach out to embrace all those who call upon you. Teach us as disciples of your Son to love the world with compassion and constancy, that your name may be known throughout the earth, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Good morning, boys and girls, moms and dads, grandmas, grandpas, and all of our extended family. It's good to see you this morning. How's that summer going? It's been hot, yeah. Are we getting ready for school? Yeah, and who knows if we'll be in the school or at home or somewhere between. Well, don't think about that right now. We got something else to do, don't we? We're gonna check out the box today. Here we go. It is that magic box, and yeah, 
I hear something. It's not very big. That would be my guess. And we're going to see what it is. I open. Oh my. No, I was right. It's not big at all. And it, it does have a little message for me. Let me put this aside. Look at this. Okay. This comes to me. The owl's name is Hoot. And I want to show this to you. I hope you can see that. It's not the biggest owl in the world, but you can certainly see Hoots. There he is. And it's made by Andrew Berg. Andrew. Made by Andrew Berg. This is very interesting. Now, do some of you know um, what this is? The, we have the owl here, Hoots. But what does this piece do? Does anybody know? Shout it out if you know what that is. Is it a keychain? Is that what it is? We don't have any keys on it yet, but that's what it could be used for. So Hoots is hanging right here on a keychain. What do you know about owls? What do you know about owls? Shout it out. Are they wise? We think they are, don't we? We say wise as owls, and they go, ooh, 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 right? <laughs> so maybe that's why this is Hoots. He has a hoo, hoo, and he's probably very wise. You know what? Um, I made a point of saying how small this was, and it is small. Look, at it. it fits, everything fits right in my hand. I can fold it up, and Hoots is right there, right? And I can open it up. There he is. This makes me think of a very important message. Sometimes we get discouraged because we're very small. We're short, okay? We're not big people yet, right? Sometimes, honestly, you want to be bigger. You want to you wanna be older. Let me tell you, I think if we were a wise owl, we would know that good things come in small packages. That's what my dad used to tell me. And I'm not a very big person. But I think he was trying to tell me, even when you're small, there are big and important things that you can do. And God loves you no matter what. That's the message I like to think of. I bet this owl hoots would know that. I, I, I think probably so. And I wonder just what went into making this. It looks like it's, by the way, it looks like it's stitched. There are teeny weeny holes and someone had to bring the thread up and through and between. What a beautiful job on that. That tells me something else that's kind of cool, and that is that God has a plan for all of our lives, and all we need to do is kind of open ourselves to God's Spirit. No matter how small or how big we are, God has a plan, and we'll follow the path like the needle and the thread, and we'll be wise as owls, and we'll be always loved because of it. Wow, this was just a, a wonderful idea, and how crafty. I'm learning that we have a huge number of talented people. Andrew, thank you so much for Hoots. What a wonderful idea. You keep up those projects, okay? I love the stitch. Very, very much. And remember this, my friends. No matter where you go, God is with you, and we are all following Jesus. That's you and me and all of us in our congregation. Look around, find somebody to love, and share God's love with each other this week. Good luck, and I'll see you next week. A reading from Romans, the 11th chapter. Paul writes, I ask then, has God rejected his people? By no means. I myself am an Israelite, a descendant of Abraham, a member of the tribe of Benjamin. God has not rejected his people whom he foreknew. For the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. Just as you were once disobedient to God, but have now received mercy because of their disobedience, so they have now been disobedient in order that, by the mercy shown to you, they too may now receive mercy. For God has imprisoned all in disobedience, so that he may be merciful to all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then a Canaanite woman from the region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away for she keeps shouting after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, It's not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, it happened at the border of two adversaries. According to Matthew, this woman is a Canaanite, a Canaanite woman, and she lived beyond the northern border of Israel. This map here will help us to get a better sense of the geography. If we take a look at it, we'll notice there is the Sea of Galilee, well south of the villages, the towns of Tyre and Sidon, which at that time were Phoenician cities. But Matthew tells us very clearly that this woman is not just a Phoenician, but he connects her with the Canaanites, the people who originally settled the Holy Land, who then were ousted by the Jewish people as they came into the Promised Land. And so there is this animosity. This woman is descended from those same people, the Canaanites, in the Promised Land, and she was, maybe more importantly, a mother very concerned about her daughter. So here again is the text from Matthew's Gospel. Just then a Canaanite woman from the region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all. And his disciples came out and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. I had this vision of, you know, a, a person bothering us, uh, maybe somebody begging for a coin or, or something to get them by and thinking, I don't have time for that today. And the disciples are saying just that to Jesus. But the text goes on, he answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, and she said, Lord, help me. He answered, it's not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. Wow. She said, yes, Lord, yes. Yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. A pretty quick and witty response. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done to you as you wish. 
and her daughter was healed instantly. How do you like that? Wow. When this woman makes her request, Jesus responds rather rudely, doesn't he? I was sent only to the house of Israel, to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Jesus was saying, your type may be on God's list down the road, but right now I'm sent to the people of Israel. And you might, like many Christians, say, good gravy. This is not my Jesus. <laughs> this is not the Jesus I signed on for. We may create Jesus sometimes, in our own image. What do I mean by that? Well, I think sometimes, quite literally, we want Jesus to look a lot like us. But Jesus cannot be possessed or controlled. There are ways we try to control. There are ways we try to claim Jesus as our own. And sometimes these build the walls between ourselves and those who have not yet heard the good news, but would love to. You may remember that Sunday school picture, the blue-eyed, blonde Jesus, fair-skinned, you know. He looks like the perfect Northern European would look. But you know as well as I do that Jesus was not a Northern European. Or maybe you are convinced that Jesus was more like a Lutheran or a Roman Catholic. By the way, Jesus was Jewish, right? <laughs> you start putting these things together and we realize that we can't, we can't create Jesus in our own image. Yes, we're attracted by his meek and mild ways, and that's normal. And the one who smiles at us and who holds his hand out in love and forgiveness, this is the Jesus we identify with. But at the same time, we tend to forget that Jesus the one we confess in the creed every week is the one who is both fully human and fully divine. Jesus responds to the woman's request harshly. It's not fair to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. Jesus is referring to the woman as many Jews would refer to the Gentiles as dogs. And he didn't mean the uh, cute little ones that you snuggle with. He didn't mean this as a term of endearment. Could it be, though, that this was a teachable moment for Jesus? Maybe Jesus was the one that needed to be taught something in this encounter with this woman. We don't usually think that way, do we? But maybe Jesus was the one who needed to be enlightened. Matthew lets us see that Jesus, I think, is truly human here. That Jesus is the one who learns and develops just like you or me. This is a Jesus who responds to what's going on around him, who is real, who is human again. This is the Jesus who doesn't know everything right away, like any of us. He is a Jesus who is genuinely human, who can learn from mistakes, who can grow in faith, who becomes more cognizant of God's great plan of salvation and forgiveness for all people. Someone once said to me, the day you no longer change is the day you stop being a human being. Well, Jesus is a human being. And I think it's fair to say that on this day, Jesus really does change. His outlook on the world may have been expanded and the Canaanite woman was the vessel for that powerful lesson. She answered Jesus' comment this way, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. She was acknowledging, maybe I'm not right up there at the top of your list, but I'm willing to come to you trusting you have what I need and knowing that. And you know therein lies her faith. The woman's persistence begins to change Jesus' attitude to outsiders. Her great faith comes closely after last week we saw Peter with his little faith. You thought about that? Peter, the insider, had a lot of trouble with faith. 
We praise him for his willingness to get out of the boat, right? But he had trouble. This woman, who is not an Israelite, who is not following Jesus at this point, at the same time acknowledges his power over her life and opens herself. She is, I think, present to create a contrast. It may be that the believers and followers of Jesus can be taught and can learn from those who are not yet a part of the family and yet have a faith that is wondrous and amazing. What the insider failed to comprehend, the outsider embraced fully. And so, this woman believed that Jesus could heal her daughter and sought after Jesus with none of the trappings of piety or holiness. Rather, this is the faith that Jesus has been looking for in all of Israel and has not yet found. He was moved and overwhelmed by the faith exhibited by this woman, a Gentile, a Canaanite, not, uh, you know... Uh, Accidentally, it was a woman, too, that Jesus spoke to. Many times he got into trouble for that. This woman exhibited the faith that Jesus wanted to lift up. And so in Christ, in Christ, the divisions that make us insiders and outsiders hold no sway. We are one people in Christ. And as we sang earlier today at the um, traditional service, all are welcome. All are welcome to God's house. In Christ, the divisions fall. The saving work of Christ is for you and for me and all those we have not yet met, all those who will follow if we open our minds and our hearts to God's love for everyone. Amen.
Let us join together in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Confident of your care and helped by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Lord, you gather the church to be part of your mission as ambassadors of Jesus Christ. As Jesus acknowledged the great faith of a woman from outside his people, help your church discover and find blessing in the faith of people we might reject. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You have blessed us with the bounty of the earth. Grant your grace to all your creatures that the earth will flourish. Relieve waters choked by garbage, renew soils stripped of nutrients, and refresh the air all creatures need to live. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You call the nations to be glad and sing for joy. Let your way be known among all the nations of the world now divided by competing interests, contending alliances, and consumed by enormous worry. Bless us and make your face shine upon all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You show unexpected mercy, kindness, and generosity. We pray for those who do not have enough, for outcasts in our cities and towns, and for those who need your healing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In you we live and move and have our being. Grant your congregation of Apostles Lutheran Church grace to find our life refreshed in you. Accompany us in the rhythms of late summer. Give us rest, renewal, and strengthen us for mission in your name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your eternal promises are more than we could ever imagine. As you gather all the saints, join us also with them on the great day of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, it's that time again to consider our response to what God has been doing in our lives. I don't know about you, but I feel blessed in so many ways. And so we make our gifts uh, as we are able uh, to extend the work of God's people in the world. But specifically, we think of our own congregation. It starts here at Apostles. It goes on to our Synod the Florida Bahamas Synod, and on to the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, and even beyond that, around the world, your gifts make a difference. Thank you for remembering us in these difficult times. It's so much easier, I know, to think Sunday's the day we gather, and oh, we're going to write that check, we're going to uh, make sure we get something in the offering plate, whatever the case might be. You can still support us. You can still love us and show us how much God means to you and how much this congregation means to not only your family but to the world around us. Someone said stewardship starts uh, whenever we say, I believe. That's when our stewardship starts. If, God, if we believe that God loves us, then we respond generously, knowing that the gifts will go to the good work that God has extended to us. Thank you for thinking of us, thank you for your prayers, and yes, thank you for your checks and the dollars you've sent. We appreciate it.
Let us join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen.